You know, if you think every member you've got in a gym knows three people, they know at least three people who they're friends with that don't exercise. Be a friend, bring a friend. That would be my message. Welcome to the Spartan Becca series on Spartan Up with Jared Cogswell, Director of Sport, and Yancey Culp, Director of Programming. What's up, Spartans? Welcome back to episode two with Dr. Paul Bedford. But I should say, if you have not listened to episode one, hit your pause button right now. Go listen to that one first, folks. It was amazing. We're talking about Dr. Paul Bedford, the retention guru. This episode of Spartan Up is brought to you by Duralane, a single injection that may provide up to six months relief from osteoarthritis knee pain. Risks can include general knee pain and pain at the injection site. You can see full prescribing information at Duralane.com. I, I, want, I want to share something. We kind of talked about this uh, before, before this episode. And uh, I'm just going to throw it out there. And, and if anybody wants to battle me personally on this, uh, that's fine. But, um, you know, we've been, uh, I, I listened to a podcast with uh, the Peloton CEO and, and very impressed with their business model. Very impressed. Very impressed by his intelligence and, and his mission. But also what fired me up was uh, he was just pointing it out point blank that basically they're at war with us and us being the fitness industry, the ones, the hardworking, passionate, energetic, uh, mission filled fitness professionals, gym owners, the ones that are putting their, their livelihoods on the line, not sleeping at night, trying to do better for this world. And, and he, he declares war basically in this interview and you know, I, I don't have anything, I want to make this clear, I don't have anything against the Peloton user because you know what? You are taking care of yourself. Congratulations. Keep mm -hmm. going. Keep doing what you got to do. But when it comes to the gym setting, what I love about the gym setting is not only what it can do for you physically, just like that, that Peloton bike, but also it's going to surround you with so many great people that you are not on, it just proves that you are not on this planet by yourself. And that is something that I believe that is gonna keep you motivated, disciplined, and more healthy, and more positive, and more confident because you're surrounding yourself with a tribe. What is, what is your thoughts on, say, digital delivery fitness versus what we do in the brick and mortar? Okay, so I think what well, I think the first mistake they might have made is to wage war on the fitness industry, um, where we should really all be just waging war on inactivity. We should focus on saying, look, there's going to be a whole bunch of people that are physically inactive that will always choose to use bricks and mortar over digital. There'll also be a group of people who are going to choose digital over bricks and mortar, and there'll be a group that overlap. You know, it's almost like the NFL waging war on baseball. You know, it's like people are going to do both if that's what they want to do. You'll have some that are hardcore diet, diehard NFL fans, some are NBL, M yeah, Major League Baseball fans, and they don't cross over. But a lot of people will cross over. I think what we need to realise is the customer will decide, the client will decide. And in order to find a way of making that relevant to, to the customer, the client, the member. We have to give them great experiences. We have to start recognizing that just giving access, I open the doors, it's a low fee, um, give you access to equipment, will be all right for some, but it won't be all right for the majority. You know, when here in the UK, when the gyms reopened after lockdown, they were flooded with members. Yeah, there were people that hung back. But there were people, you know, I've got clients who had also, their, they put up an online program uh, while they were in lockdown. But the numbers tumbled once the clubs had opened because people wanted to go back to classes. They wanted to go back to clubs. And I've used this example before, and I hope it's okay to use it here. I can cook at home. I can eat at home. I can also go to a restaurant. I can also order takeaway. In fact, now I can get delivered, my takeaway delivered. 
The fact restaurants opened didn't kill cooking at home. Takeaways didn't kill restaurants and home delivery hasn't killed takeaway. It's just another format. And what we have to do is we have to you know, really think about what is, what is it that I'm doing for this person that's more than just the exercise component and enhance that. Enhance that community if someone wants to be part of a community. Enhance that identity of being an exerciser. So I try and work with my clients in saying, look, you want to build their exercise identity, this thing that when they, just, they think about themselves, they think about themselves as someone who goes to the gym, who lifts weights, who goes for a run, even when they're not doing it. So that when they are ready to come back, they come back to the thing that they, they identify with. There's going to be, you know, there's share of, uh, there was a, there, I can't remember the, the two people who wrote it, but there was a, there was a book called, uh, talked about share of wallet or share of money. You know, and where does your, your disposable income go? I think we have to think share of customer. So they're going to do, you know, we saw that even before lockdowns and the COVID. We had people doing boutique and going to the regular gym. You know, so they were spending their money in different places, not all just in one. But they were spending it where they were. it was making them feel good. And I've got a slide that I use in a few presentations that says, when times are tough, people want to do things that make them feel good. So when people turn up, you know, when we've got people in front of us, we have a responsibility. They've chosen us. And in that moment, it's our responsibility to make them feel good. Even if feel good is they can't walk tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Man, I kind of hope Peloton gets to listen to this. <laughs> um, I was, I like that answer. We, you know, I was thinking when you were talking about that, I was like, well, we have to eat. You were giving the food examples and uh, what clicked in my mind is like, I, I want it to get to where people think we have to exercise, yeah. like we have to eat, we have to train. J JC yeah. and I, we 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 turn we turned exercise into train. Even if you're training for life, you're still training, and we we call it yeah. um, being able to say yes to that vacation with your grandkids when you're seventy. Still being able to serve people around you because you you stayed physically fit. But yeah. I I uh, man, that's another good. Uh, I could tell you were passionate about that answer, Paul. I like that. And Paul, I, well, I see, agree look, with you. I was going to. All I was going to say is, look, in our business, we like our. It's not our slogan, but it's, I suppose it's it's partly mission, partly vision. I want everybody to enjoy being physically active, whatever that is. So if someone says to me, "I like sitting in a room at home, making my living room, my you know my." My living space smell like the locker room at the gym because I'm prefer prefer to work out at home. I'm like, yeah, get on with it, go do it. I'd rather you do that than do nothing. Mm -hmm. And you know, if we increased our, if we increased the proportion of members, if we went from twenty percent to thirty percent in the next two years, we haven't got enough space in our facilities. Mm. We wouldn't be able to cope with them. If we just held on to, you know, I always joke to the trade organizations when they set their targets, you know, I remember there was one was like 20 million by 2020 and then it became 30 million by 2030. And I'm like, actually, we'd achieve that really easily if we just held on to the ones who self present, the ones who turn up and go, I'd like to try this thing. Rather than churning them, if we held on to them, we get to a point where we be going, actually, we need more facilities, we need more clubs, we need more of everything, more trainers, more managers, everything, just to cope with it. Yeah, you, I, I agree with you, Paul. You know, like I said, if you, if you use Peloton or any of the other digital deliveries of fitness, that's great, keep going. Um, however, I do believe that the power of brick and mortar is still the highest that it can be because you know what? There's a lot of people out there suffering from depression, loneliness. Loneliness is a big part of that, especially, you know, a lot of people working remotely now versus being in the office and so forth. So when you get a chance, like I'm going to get that chance when I go into this place today and I'm going to be around energy and relationships and connections. And as soon as I walk in, before I even perform a movement, I'm going to feel the love. I'm going to feel the love and it's going to fill up my spirit. 
It's going to fill me up emotionally. And then I'm going to finish my day even stronger than, than who, you know, before I came into that building. So, but, but I think also from three guys that, that really care about fitness and what it does for people, we have to collaborate more. We don't, we don't talk trash about each other. We're not tr talking trash about Peloton here, but you know what? When you're pointing the fingers, all you're doing is dividing us. You're separating us. And here's the, and, and the thing about DECA, it's all about collaboration. It's CrossFit, it's functional fitness, it's, it, we don't, it's jazzercise. Whatever you're doing to move, you're prepared to do a DECA. That's what we want it to be all about is we want to bring everybody together to celebrate fitness. We'll be right back to this interview, but first a message from today's sponsor, Doorlane. You know that knee pain can really slow you down. Sometimes that knee pain is due to osteoarthritis, a disease that affects some 14 million Americans. Learn about osteoarthritis knee pain and how to alleviate it at oaneepainrelief.com. You'll find information there about non-surgical, non-opioid treatments for osteoarthritis knee pain that may help delay the need for knee surgery. One treatment you'll find there is Doralane, a single injection that may provide up to six months of relief from osteoarthritis knee pain. It's indicated for the treatment of mild to moderate osteoarthritis knee pain when conservative treatments have not worked. Risks can include general knee pain and pain at the injection site. Full prescribing information is at Doralane.com. Spartans say no to limits. You can learn more at oaneepainrelief.com. That's oaneepainrelief.com. All right, back to the interview. So one of my final questions for you, Paul, is this. We're talking about technology. What is your favorite technology to keep you motivated and keep you on track? Oh, I, my Apple Watch. It's going to be my Apple Watch. I've, look, I, I'm a massive fan of things like my zone because I cycle. I, I ride my mountain bike. In the gym, I don't track. I just go through the motor. I, I lift till I can't lift anymore. So I put every set goes to failure. And as long as I achieve somewhere between eight and 12 reps, I'm happy. So I don't tend to track my lifting. But when I'm out riding, the thing that I tend to use technology wise is I'm using my Apple Watch to track my heart rate. I've used that in combination with my own belt in the past. But I'm often just looking at what my average speed is and my total distance. Those are the things that I'm interested in. I don't log them. I know it logs it automatically, but I'm interested. Can I close my rings? And I know when I, I first got my Apple Watch, I was like, I, I've never I've never really been known for wearing a watch. Um, but I was asked to be actually involved in a project that was going to look at the Apple Watch and how could it be integrated more within the fitness industry. So I thought I better buy one. Um, so I've worn one so I know what it does. But I made sure that I set the watch face to the one that includes the ring so I can see how much activity I've done because it works as a visual prompt for me. You know, those who are familiar with it will know the blue ring is have I stood up enough, the pink ring is have I been physically active enough, and the yellowy green ring is have I done enough exercise. And I can look down at any point in the day and go, I need to stand up more, I need to move more because I'm behind. Um, and I think simple technology is the thing that's going to move things forward. That and the prompting of a session. Um, you know, saying you've got a workout tomorrow. Don't forget to, you know, to let us know when you've done that workout. So I'm, I'm while I've worked within organizations and with technology companies that have AI and everything else, I actually think some of the most simplest things have the biggest impact. Um, and I was teasing a tech team recently with um, get your AI to outperform me smiling at somebody when I see them do it working hard. <laughs> and they were like, whoa, 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 whoa. so I think there's a place for tech. And, and I can never remember the gentleman's name, but he's a restaurateur in New York and he's got multiple restaurants and he's known for his customer service and his name escapes me. But he said, if you see our technology, then we failed. He said, so if you see our technology in our restaurants, we failed. Our technology mm -hmm. helps us run the business. It doesn't help feed the person. The, the experience is the food and the restaurant and the service. The technology supports that. And I think 
we need to work harder to make our technology do those types of things. Mm, the experience. I like, I like it. that one. I got one more and I promise that's it. Um, so th this, nobody, it's, I don't think it's even debatable. I don't think anybody walking the planet has studied brick and mortar, inside brick and mortar, what it takes to get people to stay committed, working with, with, with owners. Um, and so this question might seem like, oh, we're, we're directing it to them. But I'm going to say, I'm going to flip the script and say, I think it's a question for the masses out there that are going to a gym or may not be in a gym right now. If we're talking to all the gym owners, you've given all the advice of what to do once they're there. What's the best advice over the past 30 years that you've learned of how the type of communication, what can we say to those people that aren't in right now? What's the, what's a good, give us a good motivator to say, whoa, I'm in my community right here in Cedar Park. 80% aren't, aren't into fitness at all. They're not even have a gym membership. Some of them never have. What do we say to them? Okay. I think, and this, this might sound a bit of a cliched answer. I'm sorry, but the first thing is I'd go after the low hanging fruit. I'd go after the friends of the people who are already using the facilities and get your friend to be your friend and bring mm. a friend. Mm. Okay. I'm being a friend. I'm going to bring you to my gym so that you can benefit from that as well. I, I've worked on projects in the past quite a long time ago where it was like we were funded to go into hard to reach communities and try and increase physical activity. And there's a reason they're called hard to reach because they're hard to reach. And the reason they're not being physically active is they're not, they don't value it. You know, they're more interested in, can they feed their kids? Can they put shoes on their kids' feet? But there's a whole proportion, and I'm not saying we shouldn't try, but that's, you need lots of money to do that. You need lots of like government style health, health promotion programs. But just outside of, you know, if you think every member you've got in a gym knows three people, they know at least three people who they're friends with that don't exercise. Be a friend, bring a friend. That would be my message. Help okay. them, but they don't have to start at the same place because could you imagine, you know, both of you guys, do you know people who don't exercise? You probably Absolutely. do. Would you bring them in think. and get them to Yancy, Would you bring them in and get them to do your workout? Absolutely. Possibly not. I, no, well, I always say you may not have it. You may not have a certification, but we're all we all have a little coach in us. Yeah, but do you know what I mean. It's like, well, they don't have. We just want them in. We want them in and give them a positive experience. And so, you know, I'd say, if every, if every, well, if we've got twenty percent, and we said every, that twenty percent brought three people each, I don't know what that math would do, but it would it would make our facilities busy. And I'd reach out to them. And then you you almost want to have like a pyramid model. You know, those three bring three. Then those three bring three. Um, I think that's the easier way to increase physical activity, exercise, working out, training across the population. Because it's much easier to start if you go with somebody you know. Mm. Well, Thank I, you. for the record, Yancey is probably one of the best training program designers uh, on the planet, but I wouldn't recommend to a friend to go work out with Yancey for one of his own no. personal workouts. <laughs> no. I've done it. It hurts. <laughs> yeah. Jared's going to take you to the top of 14,000 foot mountain day one. <laughs> but it, it might go bad both ways. Paul, thank you so much for your time. Oh, you're um, welcome. Where can, pe where can people find you? Um, simplest place is at retentionguru.com. Um, Retention Guru is all one word. We've, we've just updated our website, and I'm now getting messages from people saying, um, on page such and such, you use the word learned, not learnt. There is no such word as learned. Um, I think probably anyone listening to this now or watching this now will go, Actually, we know why Paul can't spell, because um, I can't. I don't even understand grammar, but I can do it. Um, yeah, Paul at, or email me at paul at retentionguru.co.uk. I'm UK-based, London-based, so you need a .co.uk. Um, anyone who reaches out to me, they can find me all over social media. We're, I'm there constantly. So just reach out, say hi, um, and get in touch.
Paul, I appreciate you so much. You are one of the best ambassadors of fitness, the industry. Uh, you have the utmost respect from all of your peers. And I, I know, speaking for Yancey, we are honored that you were here on the podcast with us. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Thanks for listening to this episode of the DECA series on Spartan Up Podcast. Spartan Up is your partner in resilience for mind, body, and spirit. We're here three days every week. Tuesdays, you can find Joe DeSena, founder and CEO of Spartan, interviewing biohackers, business leaders, authors, and athletes. Thursdays and Saturdays, catch episodes from our DECA, Endurance, Trail, Combat, and La Ruta series. Do you know someone who needs a little nudge? Maybe they could use some motivation, tactics to be stronger, healthier, happier, more successful. Tell them about our show. And if you're watching on YouTube, leave us a comment. We want to know who's watching and who's listening. Thanks. See you next time. This episode of Spartan Up is brought to you by Duralane, a single injection that may provide up to six months relief from osteoarthritis knee pain. Risks can include general knee pain and pain at the injection site. You can see full prescribing information at Duralane.com.